life partners, always together and usually together on a bike. Dave was an experienced rider. He'd been on a bike for 20 years, and this time Patty and Dave were with friends in Las Vegas on Rainbow Boulevard crossing over 95 when Dave didn't notice a bend in the road. He drove right into oncoming traffic. Swerved, um, missed two vehicles and a bike, and then the truck that he did hit, he almost got around it, but he ended up hitting on the passenger side. Um, but he had, because he did get on it, trying to get out, he was going fast enough where when he hit, he hit the, um, knocked the spindle and everything off of the truck. He hit so hard. Um, we were attending to her, attending to Dave. I um, realized Dave was gone. There was no doing CPR. His chest was completely crushed. Um, that's when Darren, our other friend, was over Patty and um, um, at first there was nothing and we saw the uh, big gasp for air. She was on her stomach face down. Dave was on his back face up, um, gasp for air. And as soon as that gasp happened, um, a big pool of blood also came out from her head. When we were called at the scene, we had a patient coming in, it was a motor, cycle crash with a fatality the driver who was riding her was killed at the scene she was unconscious and unresponsive in the field intubated and brought to her attempted intubation and brought to us he came out and I mean, he was quite honest with us and basically said it was easier to say what she didn't break versus what she did break she had a crushed pelvis bilateral rib fractures bilateral lung injuries torn aorta and if, if you think about a torn aorta, the aorta is a main blood vessel coming out of the heart. If you tear your aorta, 95% of all the people that have a torn aorta die in, in the field. So 5% live to get to a hospital. Half of those 5% die in the route getting to a hospital. Then half of them die during their treatment. So less than 1% of the people with a torn aorta actually live. One, two, three. Okay. If those odds weren't stacked enough against Patty, she went into full cardiac arrest and had to be revived three times within the first three days after the accident. Ended up, because of her fluid needs and her blood pressure needs, ended up causing what's called abdominal hypertension, where the belly swells so tightly that it compresses all the organs and they start to die. So we opened her abdomen and left her wide open for days. She was on all these breathing machines that was breathing for her, and every time they tried to pull her off, she wasn't you know, it wasn't working and and um, we decided to uh, take her off the breathing machines and sign a DNR and put it in God's hands. Apparently, God and Patty had other plans because the same night the decision was made to take her off life support, she finally started showing signs of life. They were getting ready to sign papers that I can move on. And I always tell them, I heard what you guys were going to do. You were just going to let me go. But I said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I came too. Patty believes it was Dave who actually helped save her life. I felt like I was going. Hold on. And all I can do is look this way. And he was there. I was just like, he was right there. And he had his hand up. And he was looking at me. He goes, no, it's not your time. You can't go. Patty slowly woke up to her painful injuries and the heartbreak that the love of her life was gone. I wanted to get out and go home and see if he was home, see if he was work. I even asked him, is he here in the hospital? I want to know. I want to go find out for sure. Does he need an organ? Does he need blood? I was willing to give up anything for him, but they kept saying, no, he's not, he's not here anymore. And I refused to believe that until I got home. It would still be another three months until she could go home. They wanted therapy, people came in and they wanted me to get up and walk and do leg stuff. And I didn't want to do that. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to fall, I'm going to hurt, get hurt. And they forced me to get up and do it. And after that, I was ready to go. I'm like, if I could get up this one time, I can do it. Every day was a little bit better thanks to Patty's determination and great friends cheering her on through her simple milestones. 
her first breath of fresh air, and her first walk of just a few steps. I just forced her. We got her up. I said, you're doing this. We talked about it. We keep saying it every time I come over. You're like, no, I don't want to do it today. So no, we're doing it. That's it. And I got her up. Everything but the odds were in her favor. Patty's will to fight and keep fighting, though her body tried to quit. And the fact that she was immediately transported to the UMC Trauma Center, where she was given her best chance at survival. We're fortunate in this trauma system that we have that we're dedicated to doing just that, caring for everyone that comes through. And the system works beautifully in the sense that we have colleagues that come in, orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, hand surgeons that'll come in to see these patients and take care of them in an appropriate fashion. And they get that care quickly. A new tattoo on Patty's arm is a symbol of the person she's become. Her first bike ride after the accident, another great sign of her courage. And I was a little nervous, but I'm like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. And she took pictures and I was a little shaky when I got off at our destination, but then I'm like, I'm gonna be able to do this.